This is Money Exchange with Andrew Barnett. Hello, I'm Andrew Barnett and welcome to Money Exchange where we keep you up to date each week on everything you need to know about currency markets. The Aussie dollar has continued its recent run back higher, touching above 73 cents to the US dollar on Friday morning. Meanwhile, as the Aussie has been rising, traders have been pricing in for weeks more stimulus from the European Central Bank, driving the euro sharply lower. But on Thursday evening, the euro took off like a rocket, spiking back higher by 4%. To find out why, we'll cross to London to chat with an economist and senior currency dealer to find out why. Christmas is well on the way, and if you're heading overseas for the holiday season or anytime soon, David Brown from Best Exchange Rates joins us from London to tell us who has the best travel car deals and why you should never change your money at the airport. And joining me shortly from our Sydney CBD studio is David Green, senior currency dealer at AFEX, who tell us if any thoughts of the local currency slipping back below 70 cents before Christmas has evaporated. Plus, we'll be answering your currency questions live on the show. You can email me directly right now via andrew at moneyexchangetv.com. But before we discuss any of that, let's take a look at this week's headlines. The European Central Bank has pledged to continue its 60 billion euro a month bond buying program for another six months until March 2017 or beyond. Policymakers all cut, also cut the interest rate to a historic low of minus 0.3%. The ECB also has pledged to buy more assets with the proceeds of existing bond purchases. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen says she's confident inflation will return to the central bank's target over time, ahead of a possible rake hike in the US this month. Speaking at a congressional committee hearing, Yellen says unemployment is low and the US economy continues growing at a moderate pace. Ongoing gains in the labour market, coupled with my judgment that long-term inflationary expectations remain reasonably well anchored, serve to bolster my confidence in a return of inflation to 2%. The Reserve Bank kept rates on hold at 2% as expected for the seventh straight month at its December meeting this week. The accompanying statement was fairly similar to the previous month, although the central bank did allude to a rebalancing of property markets in September, uh, sorry, in Sydney and Melbourne. The RBA maintained its position on the Australian dollar, suggesting the currency is adjusting to large falls in commodity prices. The Aussie economy does appear to be showing some green shoots and the likelihood of the local currency falling back below 70 cents before Christmas has diminished unless the US Fed pushes up US interest rates in December and continues to maintain a positive view on the US economy. It looks as though the RBA is on the sidelines with respect to any more cuts in interest rates, so it will likely be up to the US Fed to push the US dollar higher, which in turn would drive the Aussie dollar lower. Joining us from our Sydney City CBD studio is David Green, senior currency dealer at Apex, to help us make sense of it all. G'day, David, and welcome to Money Exchange. G'day, Andrew. Mate, I'm, am I right in my thinking that the US Fed is likely going to be a significant driving force for the Aussie dollar in early 2016, post their rate decision on the 18th of December? Oh, I reckon you're 110% correct with that one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, been, the, it's been the risk event uh, well, probably for the last at least 18 to 24 months. Um, you yeah, know, well, what the Fed's going to do, we saw obviously last year the, the tapering back of that, uh, the stimulus, and then really since, uh, I suppose, September, October, uh, towards late last year, you know, we, we started to then realign our expectations in terms of when we would see an actual lift off or rate uh, increase from the Fed. Now, they've, they've not done a rate increase uh, for a very long time, almost 10 years. So, um, I mean, it's, it's going to be a huge uh, event from the financial markets perspective. And uh, I think, you know, uh, we're, we're probably getting closer and closer and closer to, uh, to, to when they are actually going to, uh, to execute on that. But whether it's in a couple of weeks or whether it's for first quarter next year, I mean, it yeah, remains to be seen. 
I think we've had three rallying weeks for the Aussie mm. dollar out of the last four yeah. in despite of some weak fundamentals facing the economy with lower commodity prices etc. Yeah. Why are we seeing in your view the, the rally on the Aussie dollar recently? It's a bit of a head scratcher that one. I mean it's uh, the, for my mind the Aussie is probably a little bit overvalued from a fundamental perspective uh, up above that 73 cent mark. So I mean we've held fairly consistently there today. We had some good retail sales numbers. This week's been a, a bit of a boom for uh, for for the local uh, the local unit considering that oh it, uh, I suppose in line with the, the data that we've had released we had uh, the RBA kept rates on hold on on Tuesday their accompanying statement was that you know the I suppose monetary policy was pretty accommodative there wasn't too much of a change in tone from the RBA Wednesday we had GDP which was phenomenal um, and uh, I suppose sorry also on Tuesday we had the current account and the, the, the interesting part about that was the huge increase the whopping increase that uh, net exports had and uh, I think delivered around 6.1 billion to, to, to the economy so net exports increased 5%, imports contracted 2%, and that obviously had a, a pretty significant flow and effect to GDP. Um, GDP was nice, it was 0.9%, beat expectations, so and as you said in the intro, intro there, so, some real green shoots for the economy. But I think in, in sort of light of what's going on in the global market, you know, we're looking at China which is slowing down. Uh, we had some manufacturing data out of there earlier this week um, and really showed a, a very stark, in stark contrast to ourselves. I think their manufacturing PMI read was the worst since 2009. So, I mean, a, a, fairly, a fairly sort of drastic situation in China. Markets got a little bit excited at the potential prospect of some, uh, some stimulus or some intervention from the, the PBOC or the central bank in China in an effort to, to try and, uh, I suppose, uh, rejuvenate uh, a, a fairly lagging uh, economy. Um, from then, we, we also have an impact though on the commodity space. We're seeing iron ore continue to write, uh, you know, renewed sort of 10, 11, 12 year lows. Oil's obviously coming off, probably finding a little bit of a, 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 a bottoming out. I would suggest at some stage there's a lot of in, a lot of pressure from some of the OPEC nations to uh, on Saudi Arabia to. To, uh, to curb production um, and all on the back of this you know we've got a, a Federal Reserve that's looking to uh, to increase interest rates and really reduce that uh, sort of yield advantage that that we have over over the US so I mean it, fundamentally I, I think the Aussies probably should be a little bit lower but we're benefiting quite a lot from the, the likes of the carry trade um, you know w which is yeah I think sort of and the investors taking advantage of, of the yield that we hold. Last time we spoke, David, the Aussie dollar was, I think, down about 68, 69 cents. Mm. And we were talking about uh, if the Fed raised rates, it could be a very overcrowded short position. The Aussie's back higher now. Should we still expect, with the rates uh, going up, you know, 75, 80 percent of rates higher in the US, should we expect to see the Aussie dollar weaken back towards 70 cents post that 18th of December rate decision? Yeah, you know what, Andrew? I reckon that like, so that's a really, it's a really tricky. This is going to be a very, very tricky. Um uh, I think uh, sort of point in the market because on one hand yes like it, uh, theoretically that's exactly what should happen because um, as I said that yield advantage that we hold over the US is reducing right so definitely the, the Aussie should I mean uh, I suppose the, the demand on the Aussie should wane because of the higher return that you're going to get for holding US dollars so so that makes sense on the flip side of that though from a let's say a, like a, a global macro perspective, if the the world's largest economy is really starting to get some um, evident uh, evidential tr economic traction in terms of, oh, I suppose, it, which enables the Federal Reserve to lift rates and be in a position where they're confident that a, a rate increase, um, you know, the the economy can withstand that, then that obviously means that uh, I think from a production perspective from all of that sort of a, you know that economic traction that the US is, is really picking up which is a positive thing and so that then starts to engender that risk trade now the Aussie is a real benefactor of, of, uh, of you know I suppose a, a risk on sentiment and so I, I think I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to actually see the Aussie lift on the back of a US interest rate hike. I think it's going to be fairly short lived because that yield play will then start to come in um, to the frame. But I think on the, on the very outset, if we do see in rate increases from the US, I wouldn't be surprised if markets turn around and said, you know what, this is actually pretty positive for the global economy and risk on and Aussies up. 
All right, mate. Well, I really appreciate your time throughout the year on the program here. And I hear next week you're getting married, so all the best I for have. the wedding next week and have a great Christmas. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. What's the euro going to do next after the European Central Bank's decision on Thursday? We'll find out next on Money Exchange when we cross to London to chat with senior currency dealer and economist at Go Markets, Jay Morgie.